In this video, I'm gonna showcase one of my top upcoming students and the lessons that he's learned in two years of trading. Hey, what's up? Tim Sykes here, millionaire trader and teacher, and today we have a treat. Um, this is my newest six-figure student, Jack Kellogg, who we will be discussing, and he actually did his own video with a lot of the lessons that he learned, because he just made quite a bit of money in one month. Understand, past performance is not indicative of future returns. What works for Jack, what works for me, might not work for you, it might not work for anybody else, but you can still learn from what someone is doing well, and learn the process, and learn for yourself. This is all about you becoming self-sufficient. This is all about you learning your own process. So I encourage you not to copy any trader, not to try to be any exact trader, but take a little something from every trader who has found success. Um, take a little something from every trader who has had failure. You're trying to learn the game, you're trying to understand this world better because 90% of traders lose. Never forget that. There's too many losers, too many fakes, too many frauds. The key in this game is being honest with yourself and with others. That is how you will find the most success. So, here is Jack. Um, this was an Instagram post that he did just the other day. He said, two years ago I was blessed to be introduced to the idea of day trading stocks. The first year and a half I had a lot of ups and downs while learning the process. Understand, he says the process. Um, six months ago, I got consistently profitable. Yesterday, I crossed $100,000 and verified trading profits and closed out a stellar month, uh, trading for $46,000, roughly. Big thanks to Tim Sykes, Tim Gratani, uh, Mark Crook, Mike Cuddy, Stephen Ducks, Roland Wolf for being my training wheels, and huge thanks to Dominic uh, for being for giving me the latest, the last push I needed to become a profitable trader. I'm more grateful than you guys will ever know. Feels like a dream to achieve this level of success. 20 years old. The truth is, it's not a dream. It's the result of hard fucking work and insane determination. Hashtag embrace the grind. This is a great post. Notice the geotag. He's in Michigan. I don't know what it is about Midwest people, but they just work hard. They just understand, you know, hard work better than other people. And a lot of my top students are from the Midwest. So we're actually going to go to the Midwest. We're going to have a Midwestern meetup. Leave a comment if you think that's a good idea. Um, if you want to attend the Midwestern meetup, say yes or no in the comments underneath this video. Um, but here's Jack. He shows every trade. I'm so proud of him. And Embrace the grind, okay? No days off, no hours off. I don't want you to think that this is gonna be easy, because it's not. Everybody wants easy money, that doesn't exist. And if you do make easy money, like a lot of the Bitcoin people, you'll probably lose it, because you didn't earn it. You didn't actually go through the ups and the downs the right way, you just got lucky. And lucky people make money in the short term, and then they lose big in the long run once they realize that they don't know as much as they thought they did. Jack has made a lot of money in the past month or two, but he struggled for a year and a half first. So you find this happening. Um, we're going to go to a blog post that he wrote. Can we switch to the Profitly? His nickname is Jackaroo on Profitly, and here's a little video that he did explaining his big month and the ups and the downs and the lessons along the way. Watch it and pay close attention. Uh, talking about my background, how I got into trading stocks, what I started doing. Uh, then I want to get into my recent success in the last 30 days. And then we'll go over a few charts at the end, just talking about a few things I want to point out for next week. Uh, so I got into trading January of 2017. And when I, I got into it, an old friend introduced me to it. I joined the challenge immediately at the end of January. And then I did exactly what everyone does, just started absorbing all the knowledge that I could, uh, watching all the Sykes video lessons, the Sykes DVDs, Gratani webinars, Mark Crook uh, webinars and video lessons. And I just had absorbed so much knowledge that when I did start trading uh, halfway through the year in 2017, I was trading part time. I didn't know what strategy to do. Um, I would s try to scalp listed stocks on the long side, but my win percent would only be 30%. Basically, it was just me chasing strength. And then I did see some success shorting. Um, 
I was shorting gap and craps over extended gap downs. Uh, stocks going red for the first time. So that showed me that I was better at shorting than going long. So I said, okay, what do I have to do now to get my hands on all these sick borrows that everybody's getting? I need to grind up enough money to open up a center point account. So my goal for the rest of 2018 was to put my head down and make a lot of money and uh, open up a center point account in 2018. So that's what I did. I grinded it out. I got enough money to open up my center point account. And I was just so stoked because Can was going on this sick run in January at the start. And I was going through like uh, my processing and you have to wait for your account to get open. So I literally missed this Can uh, first red day and I opened my account uh, January 5th. And then from there, my account really didn't go anywhere. Uh, I think I made like a grand or something in January and didn't really know what to do because I just wasn't nailing it and the fees were killing me. But then I did start to get pretty consistent in March and April and I got up to about eight grand in profits. But then this Turtle Beach came along and I got smoked this day for eight grand and lost all my profits. And I said, all right, shorting's not for me. Uh, I'm way too biased. And I have way too much conviction that all oh, this is junk and I'm just really bad at cutting my losses. So I just knew that wasn't for me. And then I saw this trader. Absolutely killing it going long. Uh, these OTC plays, he was up about like 30 grand. So I started bugging him about his strategy. And for the next couple months, I took it off and I was just working a little bit, saving up some money, some more money. And then uh, I had about 29 grand saved up or something. And I threw that in an E-Trade account. And I started trading again this day right here. And this is basically a day that CVSI started its month run from two to nine. And let me tell you, I was trading this stock for the whole entire month and I made zero dollar guys. I didn't make anything on this, but I was learning a ton about OTCs, which really paid off for me. And then September came along and that was the month where we saw MRMD. We saw uh, September MMNFF. Um, stocks like this making these sick OTC breakouts and I was able to capitalize it on them and I had a really consistent month. I made mm, 10 grand or something in September and that kind of jump started me and it really showed me that I could trade these OTCs on the long side. And then we did have to go through a slow period in November and December. And then right when I saw my next hot market, of SHMP, I was really able to capitalize on this run because of everything I learned over the last six months. So I think I made about 20 grand on shrimp so far, which is just absolutely incredible to make that on the biggest OTC runner because it shows that I was prepared. Okay, so I just wanted to go over my stats. So these are my stats for the last 30 days. Um, I've made about 47 grand. My average percent gains about 12%. My average dollar gains about 1100 and my winning percents right around that 70. This is very ideal stats to me, guys. Um, and this is the statistics I really want to stress. My average loss is $200. How is this possible if my average gain is 1100? Because I start really small in my position, guys. And once the start, once the play starts working for me, then I start eyeing it for an ad because now I have a cushion of profits. And once I see confirmation that the move's on, then I try to build into a position size where I can make a couple grand. And if the play works, if the play fails, then I just want to cut it for break even. So my whole goal is to build into a big position, risking uh, my average being my risk level. That's the goal on every single play. And, um, 
it works out really good for me because when you do get these uh, stocks that are going to run up huge, they kind of just stop what I wanted. Some of these things just grind up all, the whole entire day. BYST, AOII, these stocks just grinded up the whole entire day. So if you're able to start early on these and then add once you see confirmation, you're able to get into a pretty big position size and your risk is your entry. So if this thing is going to work and really go, you're risking nothing. And if the play is going to work, you're going to make a shit ton on it, which is the goal on every single time to go long. And when I would go short, um, you'd have to add into a loser. You have to short strength because that's what is being taught, short strength and um, keep your risk at resistance. Well, it's very easy to fall into the trap to, okay, I'm just going to risk this next resistance level. I'm just going to risk like, and keep moving your risk up. And that's how you can develop huge losses on the short side. But with going long, if the stock starts failing or the stock's under VWAP or whatever, I get really scared. I'm just like, okay, this stock's going to zero. I need to cut my losses immediately. And that's my mentality when I go long. So I'm able to keep my losses tiny, guys. And it's actually funny. I only took two shorts in the last 30 days. And <laughs> my biggest loss is $500. And it was on a short. Just as funny to me. So now I kind of just want to go over some charts and show you some thought process on these OTCs. Um, what I really like to see on these is look at this. Look at ALYI. This ALYI was one of the most predictable stocks to me. When the stock runs three green days in a row on increasing volume, so now the stock's ran from one to three. So you have the two, two cent mark as half the spike. And the stock comes down and holds the spike half the spike and then we have this first green day and we're closed right near the highs of the three cent mark so aoii prs the next day and takes advantage of it and also you need to be looking at this too look at exactly where they topped it out right at the same three cent resistance level they ran it up perfect into the three cents the stock showed to me that it can trend and hold its hold uh, green on the day and it held half its spike now let's look at fannie mae when Fannie Mae went on its run, the stock proved to me that it could run three, four days. They ran it into the same thing. They ran it into a multi-month resistance. It came down from 1.3, held 1.5, started trending back up towards its highs, and busted through. So that's kind of what I look for is I wait for the stocks to, that are going to prove itself. Like here's an example of a bad one. CBBT. Just look at this daily chart, guys. Why would you ever want to be trading? Look, it pops up, fails right on the day. It just comes back all the way down, then breaks out. It's so choppy. It's just really not ideal. You want to be focusing on the stocks that hold near its highs. VYST consolidated on five cents for five days before making its huge move. The stocks that look the cleanest are the ones that are going to work, guys. Not the stocks that are super ugly but look at this fakes red every single day the daily charts just a whole entire mess so you really want to be focusing on the charts that are clean you want to be focusing on price action um oh let me think of a good hot and a perfect price action one day when stocks can have morning spikes and hold above VWAP going sideways all day between two key levels. That's a, a very nice channel to me. And when you get volume over the price level, you can start here and then the stock's going to come down and hold its, this is just super clean action. And you get that rip all the way up to 20 the next day. Um, so that being said, this is the one I'm watching next week because it's doing the same thing AOI I did. It spiked from one now to two and had increasing volume. Now we have 25 mil and look, the stock has proven to me that it can trend like an OTC pop up sideways, pop close, strong pop sideways, or a view up pop sideways, holding the high pop right at two cents. And now it's kind of fading in the close. So if this stock can hold right around that 1.5 and have a rent day for one or two days and then pop over two cents. You better bet damn well this thing's going to run to four or five. These are the ones that work. These are the ones that you need to be focusing on. Um, so 
that's basically it for this video lesson, guys. I hope you could take something from it. Uh, see you guys in chat on Tuesday. So how amazing was that video that Jack did? Leave a comment underneath this video. Let Jack know if you liked it because I want more students to be that meticulous um, and really talk about their success or failure openly. Um, there's so much to learn from all your trades, good and bad, all your experiences in this industry, good and bad. Um, but I want you to notice one thing, because at the end of that video, I think he did it on like February 17th, like mid-February sometime, and he said he was watching one stock in particular, SWRM. And here's a chart, because um, you know Jack did that a few weeks ago as we're filming this now. Um, and SWRM has had quite a run up. Um, when he did that uh, in the middle of this chart, we're using Stocks to Trade software. Click the link just below. We're going to include a link for Stocks to Trade software. Um, but when Jack was talking about this, this stock was trading at roughly two cents a share. Um, it has since doubled. And Jack, I think, just locked in some more profits the other day on this one. So it's kind of cool um, to see that he was there before the 100% increase and it didn't like spike 100% the next day like it was down for like four or five days and I think he was buying on the dip and then selling into strength I don't know the specifics we'll find out shortly but in the video he was talking about it so learn from Jack learn from me learn from all of my top students who have a process and who have put that process into you know working for them and what works for Jack like I said might not work for you what works for me might not work for you but try to take little lessons and little tidbits from every trader whether they've made six figures or seven figures all transparent traders should be studied you can't learn much from people who don't share all the trades I'm sorry to bust the bubble of you know a lot of people where they show one screenshot like look how amazing this is or you know one screenshot at a month end I've seen traders do that you need to see every single detail. Never forget that 90% of traders lose. And in case someone who's non-transparent, they say, oh, you don't need that full transparency crap. Never forget Bernie Madoff, arguably the biggest scammer in the entire world, was chairman of the NASDAQ. So if the chairman of the NASDAQ could be a total fake because people didn't check his trades meticulously enough, anybody can be a fake. Make everyone share all their details, okay? I'm not a perfect trader. Jack isn't a perfect trader. Michael Good isn't a perfect trader. Tim Gratani isn't a perfect trader. Uh, Mark Crook isn't a perfect trader. But all of my top students and I show every single trade, not just the profit and loss, but how much did we risk? What was our you know, percent gain or percent loss? What was our analysis of the trade? It's not even about necessarily how the stock trade plays out, because sometimes you can have a good plan and for whatever reason, it just doesn't work. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad trade. Start to understand that this process has to be dissected every little bit. Why are you entering the stock? What's the catalyst? What's the flow? What's the past performance in history? What's the sector? What's the market environment? All of this stuff plays a part in what time of day is it? What's your schedule? All of this stuff plays a part in increasing your odds of success. You can ignore it, you can ignore me and my rules and my patterns entirely and just try to guess the next hot stock or the next big product, but trust me, okay? I've been doing this for 20 plus years and I do show every single trade, not just profit and losses. I actually show my audits and my income tax returns too so that you can see everything. That's the beauty of being real in an industry full of fakes. So props to you, Jack Kellogg. Props to all you guys who are studying, remember that no trader is perfect. You must follow rule number one and cut losses quickly. I don't care how good you are or how much money you've made. We're all one trade away from blowing up if we get too cocky. And if we do get too cocky, the market will humble us. So Jack has had success, but he needs to stay on his game. He needs to keep taking it one trade at a time 
needs to keep cutting losses quickly, you need to follow the rules. And the rules that I learned the hard way. Remember, I didn't have a teacher, okay? So I learned everything through trial and error. I want to save you from that pain. I want to save you years of frustration and hundreds of thousands of dollars um, in unnecessary losses as you break rules that I've learned you should follow. So again, congrats to Jack. Congrats to all of you guys actually studying this. Give yourself a, a little pat on the back, a little round of applause if you're even studying. Because most people trading these penny stocks, they just want hot picks. There's a lot of chat rooms where they just say, buy this ticker, and everyone tries to buy it at the same time. That's not going to get you rich. That's why none of these chat room people are as detailed as us. That's why they're not self-made millionaires. That's why they can't be fully transparent. It's all included. I'm not just whining because I like to whine and I'm Jewish and Jews like to whine. I'm whining because I want you to be warned. Okay? I don't want you learning bad rules from a fake trader who hasn't personally made it, a fake teacher who hasn't personally created a lot of successful traders. You know, I'm proud of my accomplishments and I want you to be next. Be ready to work hard, no days off, no hours off, embrace the grind. Hey, Tim Sykes, millionaire mentor and trader. Thank you for watching my videos. I hope that they help you. I wanna share everything that I've learned over the years. You can check out more videos right over there and also click subscribe so that you can watch all of these videos, get that knowledge and become my next millionaire student.